All right, guys. So now we're gonna get into the really fun part where we're building the listener section, which means we're gonna build the audio player. We're also going to design that whole page to go and view the audios. Well, this play button was supposed to bring us over to that page. Right now, we don't really have anything set up. We can go over to the routes. So let's go over in the code. Let's go to config routes to RB. All right. So I think I know what I'm gonna call this a uh, route for you know, the music. I'm just gonna call it resource music. So I'm gonna create a music controller and this is gonna have only a show action. And I'm gonna specify specifically that, specify specifically. <laughs> I'm gonna say that the controller is going to be a singular because usually you would try to make it plural, but we want just a singular music because music is already plural, right? You don't say musics, musics, or you know. So let's just call it a music controller. Then over in the controllers folder, I'm gonna create that file, music underscore controller.rb. Inside of here, we're gonna need a class, music controller, which inherits from application controller. And then just a simple show action, just like that. And we can just leave this blank, or we can set you know, at songs equals song dot all, we can load up all of our songs so we have them ready to go. Now we're going to need a matching view. So let's go to the views and we need to create a new folder to match the controller. So we'll create a folder named music. And then we need a matching action. So a show page. So show dot HTML the ERB file inside of the music folder. And then on that show page, that's where we're gonna do all of our styling for the section of the app. But right now we could just have an H1 X5XL that says like, let's listen to some music. All right, and now let's try to get over there. So right now, if we wanna to get to the music page, we'd have to do a slash music. And this is what it looks like. Wow, this is insane. <laughs> I didn't think it would do this. Look at the how like the gradient multiplied like a hundred times. That's crazy. All right, interesting. Well, that's how we get to the page. I'm going to go back to the main page, so like the main route. And I want to turn this button into a link that goes there. I don't know why. I don't even know why I did that style in the first place. But let's just do it. Because we have this play button right here. We might as well wrap it with a link. It'd be a link to music pass. Do super simple. And we wrap that. Boom. And now that button is actually a link. We click on it and it brings us to the music page, which right now looks crazy. But we're going to style it. So if you go back to that music show page, let's add a div. With min height screen with full and it should look a little bit different now it'll still have the gradient in the background now I don't know if we want a gradient Spotify uses just a pure background so we might just want to do like a BG gray 700 although I mean yeah Spotify basically does that 900 we're just gonna need to make all the text a lot lighter. Text gray 100. Or even a 50 or a white, just so it's really bright. Let's listen to some music. All right, cool. And basically getting into this, we could think about like, do we wanna build a nav bar like, or a sidebar, I guess, <clears throat> for this sort of thing on the side? We wanted to make it just like Spotify, but I don't know if we want to make it just like Spotify. It's really up to you guys, the people who are building your own platform. You can choose. Now, it looks like Spotify has a nav bar too. Like it has this thing, navigation buttons, that's login, sign up. There's a few different things that we can work on. But right now, let's just list all of the music. So let's get rid of the H1. And yeah, I'm just gonna put a new div. I'm gonna give it a max width 5XO, full MX auto. And 
maybe like some padding eight i have no idea how that's gonna look and then we're going to also add grid styling grid grid calls for gap eight and then let's inside of it let's loop over all the songs songs that each do song and then inside of here we can style the card for the song we can add like a div with full height 40 and we can try to print out the image because all these songs should have images so we can do an image tag for the song dot image now I know that's going to show up really huge so I need to add a class like height full with full object cover just so that it kind of fits in the right spot and now when we reload hey at least we have all of the images showing up and they don't look too bad so you know what? I'll add the height 40 I'll add that onto the image then we can add a rounded large so give it a, a nice rounded effect on each of the images here and what we can do is right under the image tag we can display the song.name inside of some sort of tag I'm just going to use a P do text Excel make sure to make that text lighter so we can see it and I'll close off the P whoops so it looks like actually it's undefined method name for a song so I guess I called it a title probably instead of a name let's reload all right cool this is what it looks like we have that name it looks very large actually with text XL and we can put the artist name underneath so song dot artist dot state name just like this and let's make this a little bit smaller so instead of text XL we could actually just remove that and use the default sizing we could also change the color a little bit Gray 200 all right there we go that's a little something so we have the name and then we also have the artist name right underneath you can make this a little bit smaller too like text SM for small now you can really tell like that's the artist this is the title I guess kind of now for playing the song <laughs> we would add some sort of play button around here and then we'd have to add some custom JavaScript actually to handle playing the song and then like when you play another song you want to turn the the previous one off there's a few things like that that you want to think about when you're building something like this but it's all very fun stuff so first of all we could get those play buttons which I think we already have one don't we didn't we add a play.png we have a play button we could use now I don't know if we want to do that a flat icon is a good place to get icons the only problem is you can't really color these so if you have a black PNG it's an image so you can't really color it to be like whatever color you want which can be kind of annoying but there is a lot of options to choose from hmm there's another site called hero icons and I know they do have a play button so we could get them from here and we could get the actual SVG they have solid they have mini micro and they have outline so we want to just get a solid play button we could copy that SVG or we could even get the play circle and now for play buttons where would I want to put that maybe I'll do another div flex but then I'll have another div flex flex call I guess I do a double nested just for these links so that they're stacked on top of each other and close off this div and here's where we can put the play button I'm just like putting the SVG right here on the page which is not really where you'd want to put it but you can see it shows up at least although we can't really see it that well all right I think what I'll do is I'll just render a partial play and then we can pass in the song all right so the play partial is going to be inside of music we're going to create a new file
call it underscore play .html .erb. And boom, we can just drop in our play button. And I'm gonna try to style it a little bit more with like the class. Let's do width 10. And I think we can style it with fill. We can give it a certain color. Let's just do a light indigo. At least we can see it. There we go. You can see it on the page now. And we can probably wrap this in a link too, because eventually we might want to have like a link on it. Although we're going to be using purely JavaScript. A link to. Yeah, let's think about how we want to style it. So actually, we have this one div with the flex call, and then we have the other one with the flex. Why don't we do justify between? which will push both items to opposite sides, which means the play button will go all the way over there. And that looks like a pretty good spot for it, honestly. You click on it and boom, it would start playing. We can also do a hover state. So when you hover on the play button, it, you can tell like it's ready to be clicked on. So we can do that by going back to our partial and right here on this icon, like this SVG code, you do a hover fill indigo 500. There, look at that. Now when you hover on it, it actually changes colors. And there's a lot more you can do for hover states. Like you can make it start bouncing. There's some animate classes that you can hook into on Tailwind. And obviously you can do custom CSS too. We don't have to just rely on Tailwind for everything. Even though I usually do. And then we can get the pause icon too. Even though we really don't need this yet. Whoops. Grab that pause circle. Wait, why is it not copying? There we go. We just have the same styling, but I'm gonna hide this one. Because if we show it right now, if we reload, now we have two, which we don't want. So I'm gonna hide this one for the pause. I'm adding hidden. Just like that. All right, and this is actually pretty good to go. So from here, we need some JavaScript, which allows us to, when we click the play button, switch the icon for the pause, and also start playing the song on the page, right? Which, by the way, I need to put on headphones so I can hear. Let me make sure that it's actually playing. Let's get our headphones on. Yeah, for this, we need a little bit of JavaScript. So in Rails, whenever I'm adding JavaScript, I'll just create a stimulus controller. You guys have probably seen this on my YouTube and other people's YouTube. That's just the way to go in the modern Rails. So let's create a stimulus controller for our play buttons. So I'll do that by going to console and typing Rails G stimulus. So this will generate the stimulus controller for us with like the boilerplate code. Now I used to write my stimulus controllers by hand each time, but this generator comes in kind of handy so you don't have to remember all the boilerplate stuff. So Rails G stimulus, and then we'll put the name of our controller. So if I just want to call it like music controller, we could call it that. So let's do Rails G stimulus music. So now we have a music controller.js. And you can just restart the server. But now we have that music controller. And what we can do is we can hook that into our element somewhere. So probably on the play partial, I can add that data controller. Let's just add, um, let's just do like a div inside of this link that wraps these two icons. Although we might actually want it on the, on the link too itself. It's tricky. <clears throat> Maybe we'll have a div wrapping around just in case, because we probably want to hook onto the link too for some JavaScript events. So we're gonna have a div that wraps this link to, and then we're gonna set the data controller to music, just like this. And already we can go and do like a console log. So if we go over to the app JavaScript controllers, and inside the music controller, this is our stimulus controller right here. And inside the connect action, this is whenever our element gets loaded on the page say like console log hey I'm on the page this is cool we can actually add JavaScript code which will execute whenever we want to 
So if you reload and open up the console, like the inspect element tools, you'll see we got seven different logs for ham on the page. And if you notice, we have seven different songs. So that's perfect. It's loading up for each song, seven different instances of JavaScript. But that's also something that you should consider when you think about like how we're going to build this, because eventually if we just start playing one song, you know, like, look at this, the events stack up pretty well. So you're going to want to handle all of that stuff, which we will in this video. So yeah, I'm console logging. Hey, I'm on the page. Now let's talk about play. Let's just rename this to play and think about that. So when you do click the play button, this is where we would go to. And we can set that up by going back to the play partial and let's add the action onto the link to you do data action music and then do the pound sign on play so music play or we might even do toggle because I think we would be using the same method for both so if you want to pause or play so we can just call it toggle and I'm gonna pass in the event here this is pretty important we have to prevent the default because we're using a link Normally, a link would want to like re refresh the page, right? That's why we got all these different uh, logs when we were clicking the play button. But now, since we're preventing default, you can notice that this does not redirect the page anymore. It doesn't do anything. But it will once we add our custom code. So that's a cool thing. You can cancel out the link, say like, okay, that link doesn't actually perform like a link. And then you can do custom code right here. You can even get like the href and console log where that link was going or like you can redirect them to some specific route so javascript is kind of cool or i guess it's not the href it's probably like something else i don't know or actually i think that link doesn't even have an href anyways on this toggle what we're really going to do is so let's start off by toggling the icons right so we're going to need to add some sort of Target. So targets and stimulus is a way that you can hook into elements inside of the controller. So we're going to add a data target or actually a data music target. That's how you specify a target. And we'll call this play. And we could do like pause. Or instead of that, we could just have an icon target. And then we'll toggle on the icon target. We can just do it on both. I don't know, let's just try doing it like that. So we have a music target icon. And one of them's always gonna have the hidden class. So that's where it comes in. Like we'll just toggle it on both. So inside of toggle, oh, first actually we have to specify the targets. So at the top of the controller, so outside of the toggle function, but still inside the controller, we can write static targets equal and pass in the array and then we'll set it to icon. That's our only target right now. And then inside of toggle, we can say this dot icon targets dot for each target. And then we'll run some code on the target, which will be classless dot toggle hidden. So that means the play button. Wait, actually, why did the styling got all messed up now they reloaded? There must be something inside of here. link to oh let's add oh actually right up here what the heck what happened to this i totally like broke this top thing for some reason all right so yeah i kind of like messed up that that element all right let's add our target back so data music target equals icon i'm going to copy this i'm going to put it on both now I'm going to reload and when I click, you'll see it actually just toggles the icon and it works both ways. So that's pretty cool. We can toggle it, but obviously there's nothing playing. There's no sound. So to make the sound play, we would want to create an audio source. So in the simplest terms, you could just say, like, let your audio equals new audio. Just like this so we're initializing an audio and then we're going to set a source which would go to the source of our file which we have to actually pass in so i'm going to pass this in just right here at the top on the data controller 
I'm going to pass it in through a value. So you can say data music dash URL dash value. And right here, we're going to be able to pass in the URL. If we can do a URL for and the song dot, what do we call it? <laughs> Audio file or something? I can't really remember. Let's just say, I think it's audio. And we'll be able to test right now because if I reload, it says undefined method audio for an instance of song. All right, let's just look at the model. So if you go over to models, song.rb, it should be defined. Oh, we have an audio file. That's kind of what I was thinking. So we're going to pass in just like this. This is how we're going to get the URL for the audio file. Just literally say URL for audio file. It's like the most readable method. All right, so now we're going to be able to pass it in. So on the music controller itself, we have to define that URL or the values up here next to targets. So static value is going to equal the URL, which is a type string, just like this. And now inside here, when we set the source, it's going to be off of this value. So this dot URL value, just as simple as that. So now we've set the source. And then finally, we could just say audio dot play. I forget if there's an auto audio dot toggle. That might be better, but for now, let's just do play because we can make sure that this works. Now, if I click play, just like that, we have our first audio playing in our audio streaming platform. So congratulations, guys. We got this far and we still have so much more to go. So now when I want to pause it, though, you'll notice it actually just like creates a new audio. Ah, and it keeps going. So that's kind of like the tricky part here. Because uh, first we have to handle like just pausing it for the specific audio. And after that, you have to handle for multiple audio. So it's kind of tricky, but we're going to get through this because I've done this before. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to say on this toggle, actually, let's move this, these first two lines where we initialize the audio. Let's move that back into the connect. Let's put the connect back. We're going to initialize the audio just like this. Let audio, instead of saying let audio, let's say this dot audio so we can use it inside the toggle method. There we go. So we have initialized the audio like this. And over here, when we play it, we can say this dot audio dot play. But we can also check if it's playing or not. So we can say if this dot audio is playing. Obviously, if it is playing, we're going to want to pause it. It's already playing, but you clicked it again, which means you want to pause it. Otherwise, if it's not playing, then we're going to play it. If that makes sense, because that's kind of how audio players work. All right, and now let's reload. Let's see if this works. So I click play. And I clicked pause, but now it's not pausing for some reason. So I'm just going to see if I can console log. If the audio is playing. So I click it once, it says it's undefined. I click it twice. Oh, maybe it's always, maybe that's not right. All right, let's look that up. Check if audio is playing JavaScript. Oh, right, if it's paused, you can check the pause property. So if not, this dot audio pause. Right. Let's check that. Let's go back. All right, it's playing. Boom, and it's paused. And the cool thing is this will work. You know, this actually works really well. We can play a song, we can pause it. Awesome, yeah, this is really the start to our app. All right, guys, already we have an app that allows us to play our music. And it works fine enough as long as you can play and then pause the one that you're listening to and go to your next one. Because I'll show you what happens if you don't pause it. All of these are going to start playing. And that is not what you want. You don't want every single audio to start playing. Or like, What I'm saying is when you click one and it's playing, you click on the next one. You want the previous one that was playing to turn off. So how do you do that, guys? 
How do we do that? <laughs> because in our JavaScript, each one of these controllers is just scoped to the current, like to the individual context. So each one is just on the, like each play button is its own independent piece of JavaScript, right? Now here's where you can start hooking into more things like like on the window, for example, window, we could have a window audio. So instead of saying this audio equals new audio every time, you could say like if not window dot audio or not audio, <laughs> then we're going to initialize it. So something like this, this audio equals new audio. Or no, not that this dot win this dot audio window dot audio. So we'd initialize it right here. And then on the toggle we could check if window dot audio dot source equals this dot URL value. Or actually if it's not equal, then we could say like window dot audio dot pause. And we set the new source equals this dot URL value. So my logic right here is going to check if the source is equal to this. If it's not, it means like it's a new song. So we're going to pause it. Or actually, we want to like restart it. So I think we also have to set window dot audio current time equals zero. All right, let's see how that works. I'm going to press play. Right off the bat, it says, cannot read properties of undefined reading paused. Oh, that's all the way down here. So this.audio paused. So we need to replace that with window.audio. Now that we're doing it off the window. You see, it actually works, except for pausing it doesn't work. Which is kind of weird. I want to check, I want to make sure that this is only happening the first time. So my console log, like, Audio is different, playing current one now. I'm just going to make sure that that doesn't happen every time we click. And it does. <laughs> As you can see, it totally does. It keeps saying that it's different. Let's console log the window audio source, and let's also console log the URL value. We click play. Oh yeah, we get two different things. Because the source, the source is the full URL, but the URL value is just a local path, weirdly enough. So I'm pretty sure that's just a glitch uh, from the play. So we're passing in URL four, but probably we're not passing in like the whole domain. So I think another way we can do it is with Rails blob paths, but you can also say URL, which would pass like the whole domain. All right, it looks like it's still, yeah, now it's working better. Now it actually uses the same thing and it's, we only got that log one time. So our pausing is working again. Now what happens if we click on another song? It works. All right, what if we click on a song while it's playing? It turns off the old song because we're using the window. This is awesome. The only thing now is all of the icons are obviously still like they don't revert back. So we're going to need to tell the other icons to turn off. Like that's basically what you have to do. And we can do that by setting out an event. So actually on this music controller, let's just set off an event. I guess like right here when we're toggling all the icons and stuff. Also, let's move the prevent default up to the top again. All right, let's go right after we set the audio, we'll, we'll set off an event. So I think the way you do that is you can say document dot dispatch event. And then we have to pass in a new custom event. 
and you put the event name right here. So the event name would be like audio player pause. And then you can pass in, I think you can pass in some options. Is isn't there a message or something. Let's look it up. Custom event JavaScript. Look at the custom event constructor. Yeah, you can pass in options with like it's something like a detail. That's what I was looking for. So your event can have a detail. What we could do is we could pass in like the URL or like the audio source. And we'll just pass in like this dot URL value. And the reason why I'm passing this in is because we're going to listen for this in all of the controllers. And then we can just do another check, just like right here. If the audio is playing a different song, then we would, you know, hide this icon. So audio player paused. Or no. How about we say like audio switched or audio player dash switched so that's the name of our event and what we'll do is this should work right here I think or we might want to dispatch it on the window document window or we could just say window dot dispatch event and then over back on that partial so we go to the music folder and the partial for play we can do is we can add a data action the audio player switched at window so we're going to listen for it on the window and then we're going to point it to the music audio switch that'll be our function that we make i'm going to move this down on another line so you guys can see it better so this is how you can communicate between controllers you usually do it through events so you dispatch event on like the window or something and then you can use it to talk between the controllers. So on the music controller now, we could have a function called, what do we just call it, music switched? Or audio, we call it audio switched. Or we could also, maybe audio changed is a better. Here we go back, all right, update that to audio change. That's what we're gonna call it. And inside the music controller, we're gonna get the event. We could set like the new URL is equal to the event detail and then whatever we define it up here, the audio source. Just like that. And then we can do a check if new URL is not equal to this dot URL value. And we just console log like uh, new song is playing. And then we just want to hide that, uh, the icon targets. We want to just toggle them real quick, just like this. All right, let's see how this works. So we're going to play the first one. Oh, so new song. Oh, the only thing now is um, <clears throat> each one of these. Now the event's working like too well, because when we played the first one, it actually toggled all of them, even though it shouldn't have toggled them at that point. Uh, yeah. So I guess what we want to do instead of just toggling all of them, we want to do like a more defined check. Because we know like this, we should always be hiding it. We shouldn't be toggling it ever. So just check if. Oh, yeah, that's actually tricky because we don't have a way to distinguish the play and the pause target. Ooh, that's tricky. Just because we have an icon target. So we might actually want to switch out these targets for like a play and a pause target just so we can specify between them. So let's try that out. I'll switch it from an icon target to a play and a pause. And inside the music controller, let's also switch this. Play pause. The only thing that we're gonna to have to update is right here where we're toggling each thing. So in this case, we're gonna 
We still want to toggle both, actually. Let me stop play target. And we get rid of that loop. So just a playlist, or a play target, classless toggle, and for the pause target. So this should still work. There we go. Now for the other case where we're going to be updating new songs playing, we can just check if this dot play target dot class list contains hidden. The play targets class list contains hidden. It means it's probably showing the pause icon. We want to say this dot play target class list dot remove hidden. And also this dot pause target class list add hidden. Alright, that should work. So now when we play one song, there we go, we play the other one, you'll see that it turned off this one. If we went back and played it, yeah, everything works. There we go. So just like that, we have a working audio player in our app. This is beautiful. We can probably get rid of some of these console logs now. Clean it up. And just like that. This is our code right here. It works pretty well. Yeah, it allows us to listen to music in our Spotify app. This is beautiful. This is a huge, like a great start to the app because from here we can do so much. Like literally so much. We have a working audio player. Probably the next thing we want to do is add like a, a player that pops up on the screen at the bottom. That would be pretty sick. And then it can visualize... You know, there could be a track that shows like how far in the song you are. It's awesome guys, I hope you enjoyed this and we're gonna keep building on this. We're gonna keep designing some awesome features.